Easterlings. Most badass baddies in Lord of the Rings. And we're going to make them smaller. And they really are badasses. I mean, look at them. They're golden red, bang done. And is it just me or do they look a little bit like an early 90s pop group here or maybe TV show? Rune Arrangers? I don't know. They're from this place called Rune that's more like a continent than it is a country. It's so large, in fact, that saying Easterlings is a little bit misleading as if they're a single race of people, but they're not. They're just from anywhere within Rune. And Rune just means East. So does that mean we can call them Runelings? Runelings? I don't know. Maybe. Let's try. We'll be foregoing the usual comfort of 28 mil, which is the scale used for Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game, in favour of 10 mil, which is the scale used for Warmaster. Warmaster is a game that has been since discontinued by Games Workshop for some reason. I'm sure it's nothing to do with the profit line. But not to worry, it's such a good game that has been lovingly kept alive by the community and adapted for all sorts of different things, including Lord of the Rings. So today, we're going to be taking the Easterlings and making them compatible with this beautiful game that I've been learning about. Let's do it. We're starting with the Eastern Dragon Mercenaries from Wake's Emporium. And I printed these out on my resin printer and we're going to be painting them gold first. We primed them in brown. Um, which is a good colour to prime in because you don't have to paint anything brown uh, which is, um, trust me, it's great. Just uh, stick with me here. Um, obviously we're calming down a bit here, we're slowing down. Um, we're moving on to red uh, for all the cloth and for any of the flags. I've used Mephiston red here but you can use uh, a red of your choice. I, I permit you to use a luscious red of your liking. And there we go, that's the base colours down. I decided to use a Vallejo dark vehicle wash all across the board here for expediency purposes uh, but I thought it was a little bit muggy so we'll be coming back to this later with a different type of wash but more on that well you know later. I'm highlighting here with Wild Rider Red and it's more orange than it is red uh, just for your information and I mixed in a little bit of Mephiston uh, Red to make it more um, red again and uh, you don't have to highlight at 10 mil, I like to. I like to put a little bit more detail in, but you really don't need to, because once they're all stacked up, you probably never notice, but I'll know, so. And now I'm painting all the gold bits on these flags, basically, so yeah, and then the red. And again, we're just following the same process as we did before, red, and then highlighting in an orangey red after the washes. If you've seen my videos before, you know I like painting flags. Uh, so I spent a while painting, painting this flag and uh, there's one with a flag and one with a smaller flag uh, you know so you can see the, the difference. I wanted to have some serious fun with some conversion so I printed all sorts of little bits and shrank them down from 28mm and this is a troll I shrank down from 28mm and it's an eastern troll which is cool. Uh, I mean it's an eastern troll do you know what I mean? Like, it can't really get much better than that. So we're going to paint him gold, um, obviously, because he's an Eastern Troll, um, and they're just covered in gold, which doesn't make a lot of sense, to be fair, for armour. It'd be quite soft, but it's probably just gold-plated, which doesn't make sense anyway, because it'd probably chip off. But anyway, we put some silver bits on there as well. And again, with the cloth, we're starting with the red, and then we're going to move up to highlighting in Wild Rider Orange after the washes, which is what we're doing now. And also, I did a wash with a kind of... Agrax, a yellow Agrax that was mixed with some um, Yazrag yellow, yeah, I don't know, something like that. It's basically yellowy brown, you know what I mean? I also found these catapults that were supposed to be in, I don't know, 15 mil or something like that, but they worked perfectly, just scaling them down a little bit. I think it was 66%. Uh, the other ones, by the way, were down from 28 mil, is 39%, or 33% technically, but I find that 39 fits better. Anyway, there was some uh, metal bits to do, some bits of rope, again, red and gold, just like before, and then used Agrax Earthshade as the wash, and then the yellowy version on the gold bits. But as per usual, I felt my consciousness being pulled across the void into the vortex. Did you hear that? Did I hear what? I'm not sure, but it was close. You've been fretting ever since we've been near Mordor. Ah, yeah, probably just imagining things. It's a creepy place, you know what I mean? Creepy place. Nah, you're not wrong about that. It is a creepy place indeed. Come on, I've got a pepperami in my bag we can share. Hello, welcome to the Vortex, um, sort of a pocket dimension, uh, in between pocket dimensions, and um, this is uh, the Vortex Very Tired Edition, and I'm speaking quite quietly, uh, we've been looking after a toddler, 
um, bless her. She is, she is amazing. <laughs> She's very cute. Um, but we're also very tired. Should probably put um, maybe put a bit of effort into it and put the hat on maybe. Um, is that? Yeah. So um, I launched a Patreon recently, and um, and if you like the channel, if you like uh, the kind of thing that you, you're seeing with, with your eye, eyes and your hearing, I'm so tired. That gives you access to a Discord, and um, and we can talk. Do we have a chat? Me and you, can't we? But yeah. Anyway, uh, if even if you just like pop a like and uh, maybe leave uh, leave a comment, put the notification bell on if you really fancy it. Or if not, just go away. Don't go away. Like watch the rest of it. Um, it's going to be quite good, I promise. Uh, lots of things coming up that are going to be quite cool on the channel. Um, I've been learning Warmaster, and I'm really loving it. And um, also. David, uh, someone who watches the channel and left a comment, has sent me his own rules and they're awesome. I think that's what I love about this game. It's uh, very clearly been kept alive by the community and I'm a newcomer to it and I'm excited. And um, should we get on with the video though? What do you reckon, Millie, yeah? Yeah, exactly, mate. Exactly. Come on, mate. I was having a really long, hard think about my life and I realised I needed chariots in it, so I decided to find some chariots. Unfortunately, there were no chariots in 10mm and I found these ones in 28mm, so I decided to scale them down to roughly 39% and that was perfect. I printed them in resin. After printing, I decided that I'd glue them together with super glue and prime them in black. And I thought it might be a cool idea to continue to paint them, so I did this using a dry brush and some steel legion drab, which is kind of a brown. And then I painted all the bits that were meant to be gold, as far as I was concerned. At that point, it looked like this. Lovely jubbly. Now, of course, it was time for silver, starting with the spiky wheel bit, and then the arrowheads, and the bull's helmet. And here's a visual update on that. I was now returning to Mephiston Red, a changed man, ready to paint it on the flag and on the cloth and on anything else I decided that I'd like to be red. Like on the bull's helmets because uh, I thought it was cool. I took some time to select a new paint from the paint selection zone and I came out of this experience with a shabti bone. A shabti but a shabti. I thought they might like some beige shirts and I also highlighted the saddle for some reason. Coming in hard here with the Agrax Earthshade, pretty sure this is the one I mixed with the yellowy, orangey stuff, so it'd be nice on the gold, put it on the brown as well, chuck it on, chuck it on, chuck it on. Oh yeah. Give me that, give me that. I don't know what, sorry. What? So here's the difference between the two washes. We've got the Nasrag Yellow and Agrax mix on the left and Vallejo Dark Vehicle Wash on the right. I decided to bring these two closer together just so they fit a bit better. I wanted some barriers and stakes because I thought it'd be cool, so I printed these ones here. Painted the various ropes and whatnot, weathered and washed, and added sterling mud. It was time for facing the basing, and we're going to start with sterling mud because I'm, uh, I'm, I'm loving it right now. I'm, I'm its biggest fan. Man could call me sterling mud stan. I don't know what, what's going on anymore. It's, uh, it's good for um, texture, filling holes, looking like mud. Talking about dirt, this is dirt from my drive. I put it in the oven for a bit, so it killed all of the nasties and all of the insects and whatnot in it. So, yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot earlier, this is the trolls from Coplair. Coplair, Coplair miniature, I don't know. It's, uh, the link's in my description anyway, and I shrank it down to 39%, perfect, there you go. We're putting on some PVA mix of water onto the base so that we can sprinkle on some drive dirt. Uh, so it's all coming together now. It's all making sense in the wrong order, obviously. Don't know why, because I could have just edited it differently. But, oh well. I'm spraying on some sealant here, and that means when it dries, it will be solid as all hell, man. I'm sorry about that. It's the same process now across all of them. Um, but I thought I'd show you. Oh, look at this dude. I, I forgot to show you. I painted him. Tiny hero. Pretty cool. I called him um, Shanae. Shanae. Um, after Shania Twain. 
I did most of these in a sort of, uh, well, a dirty, muddy, dirty sandiness, but this one's green, just to show you what that's like. I'll probably end up making these all green, um, but for the purposes of this video, I wanted it to fit both in a green setting, uh, a grassy sort of setting, and a sandy setting, or, or maybe neither of them, somewhere in between. I don't know. To be honest, I've just ran out of tufts, and um, I, was, I was losing the will to live, so I just thought I'm going to leave it dirty. A force of warriors arrives from the east clad in gold and red. Their weapons of cruel precision and warriors of malicious skill. They revel in warfare. They have perfected their weapons of war and will use them to terrible effect. They have tempered their hatred and they will fight to the last mass. Finally getting to add these to the already quite large Mordor force is really satisfying, it's a really good feeling. I didn't want to get bogged down in making a really large force, I just wanted them to be interesting and look like the elite soldiers that they really are. They add a pop of colour and interest to the Mordor force you know, if it's just orcs, it's very dark and drab, which is fine. I really like the chariots, and the Easterling troll just towers above his, uh, I suppose, more Western cousins, almost like he's the result of selective breeding and even harder training than the trolls would have received, or at least some training, I suppose, <laughs> in comparison to Mordor trolls. You probably don't get a lot of training, to be fair. Um, yeah, catapults looking sick. Um, I can't wait to give this a go, and that's what I intend to do in the next video. Uh, until then... Uh... Here are two more entrances to the Vortex. Choose wisely, my friends.